Hi everyone, this is Maverick Pa, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss a question involving the hybridization of carbon in ethene. Now let us take a look at this question. Which diagram best shows the shapes and relative energies of the valence orbitals of carbon in a molecule of ethene? So we have a few permutations here, which we will have to go through subsequently. But let us consider a molecule of ethene. If I consider the valence orbitals of a carbon in ethene, what would the valence orbitals be like and what will happen to their relative energies? So in this case, we will have to introduce the concept of hybridization. So let us run through the state of hybridization of carbon in ethene. Now, if we consider ethene and the state of hybridization of carbon, we will have to first consider the total number of sigma bond carbon is forming because hybridization with respect to carbon will be the mixing of orbitals to form a certain number of hybridized orbitals then subsequently it will be used to form sigma bonds so i think this idea is important hybridization it is to explain formation of sigma bonds so if i consider ethene carbon then this carbon has one single carbon hydrogen bond two single carbon hydrogen bond and one double carbon carbon bond now if it is a single bond then it will be a sigma bond and if it is a double bond, then it will be one sigma and one pi bond. So I know that with respect to this carbon, in total, you will have three sigma bonds. So therefore, we can deduce the state of hybridization of that carbon. Now, students who are familiar with this should associate three sigma bond to sp2 hybridization. But let's run through this idea. Now, if I consider carbon, which has six electrons, the electronic configuration for carbon will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Of course, when we consider valence electrons, carbon will only use the electrons in its second principal quantum shell, which is n equals to 2. That means these four electrons here for overlap with another orbital of another atom, then subsequently forms a bond with other species, right? So we only focus on the valence electrons. So if I consider 2s2, 2p2, for carbon in the ground state, the electronic configuration should be something like this 2s2, 2p2. So these 2s electrons are paired. 2p electrons, they should be occupying different p orbitals because according to Hun's rule, the electrons should occupy the orbitals singly and with parallel spins. Then subsequently, if I have more electrons, then the electrons will start to pair up. Of course, for carbon, it doesn't take place here. We just need to worry about 2p2 the configuration will be something like this. But you notice straight away something interesting comes up because if I consider carbon in the ground state, carbon only has two unpaired electrons, so it can only form two bonds, which of course it's not the case, right? Because I know that carbon in total can form four bonds in ethene. In fact, carbon in organic compound will always form four bonds. So if I consider carbon in the ground state, I have only two unpaired electrons, so therefore I can only form two bonds based on carbon in the ground state. So the first thing that carbon would do is this process called excitation. Now excitation is a different idea from hybridization. Excitation is simply the process of promoting an electron from a lower energy state to a higher energy state. So in this case, I'll have this electron which is in my 2s orbital. What I do is I put in a bit of energy, I promote this electron and I put this electron here to 2p subshell. Because 2p subshell energy level it is higher, so the process of putting an electron from 2s to 2p, this process is called excitation. So after excitation, let me draw this out. This process, remember this is excitation. Excitation has nothing to do with hybridization. Excitation essentially it is the unpairing of electrons so that I have more unpaired electrons and potentially I can form more bonds. Alright, so I've put in the orbitals. Now remember the process of excitation is I'm just putting the electron from my 2s to 2p subshell. So I'll end up with something like this, right? I'll have one electron in my 2s orbital and three electrons in my 2p orbitals. So now I will have four unpaired electrons and potentially carbon can form four bonds with other species. So up to now we are at excitation, but Excitation alone, it doesn't explain the shape of my carbon because if I consider eating carbon, the shape with respect to my carbon should be trigonal planar. And I know that the shape for my S orbital, it is spherical. P orbital, it is 
dumbbell shape and then they are perpendicular to each other for my 2PX, 2PY, 2PZ. So if carbon is using these orbitals for overlap with hydrogen and my carbon, then of course the outcome will be nothing like trigonal planar. So this concept of hybridization comes in. Hybridization says that if I want to form a certain number of sigma bonds, then I'll mix that number of orbitals and I'll get that number of hybridized orbitals which are equal in shape and energy. So since carbon want to form three sigma bonds, so what you do is you mix three orbitals, you mix 2s, 2px, and 2py. So I'll mix three of this guy and I'll get three equal hybridized orbital which will look something like this. Alright, so we have the process of hybridization here. Remember 2s, 2px, and 2py will mix and form three equal parts and since they're degenerate, we lump them together and the name of this hybridized orbital we call it sp2 hybridized orbital. Now sp2 is literally mixing sp, so maybe mathematically it is more appropriate for me to call this sp cube hybridized orbital, but in chemistry we never do that, right? We call this sp2. So we have to understand sp2 is just written as sp square and it is mixing s and 2p orbitals and I get three equal parts, so this hybridized orbital, we call this sp2. Inside each hybridized orbital, I'll have one electron. So each of these guys will be used to form sigma bond. And what you notice is I'll have my 2pz orbital, which is a remainder. It is not involved in hybridization. It is carried forward here. So this 2pz orbital will be involved in pi bond formation. So you notice for my sp2 hybridized orbital, will be involved in sigma bond formation. Any remaining p orbital will be involved in pi bond formation. So with respect to sp2 carbon, we will expect carbon to form three sigma bonds and one pi bond. If you look back at etin, it is exactly the case, right? Because this carbon forms one sigma bond with hydrogen, another sigma bond with hydrogen, another sigma bond with carbon, and we also have a pi bond between this carbon and the other carbon. A total of three sigma bonds and one pi bond, exactly explained by hybridization here. Now the next thing we will have to consider is the relative energy level between my sp2 hybridized orbital and 2p orbital. Now sp2 hybridized orbital will have one third s character because out of these three orbitals used for mixing, one part of it comes from my 2s subshell, two part of it comes from my 2p orbitals. So since it has one third s character, then we will expect sp2 hybridized orbital to be more stable than 2p orbitals. Now, if I compare S orbital versus P orbital, remember S orbital or S subshell, it is more stable than P subshell. So we have learned this under atomic structure, right? 2S is more stable than 2P. If I have 3S, 3S is more stable than 3P, which is in turn more stable than 3D. So therefore, if my hybridized orbital has S character, it will definitely be more stable and it will be of a lower energy level as compared to 2P orbital. Alright, so I think the idea is good to reiterate. Remember my sp2 hybridized orbital because it has one third s character, so therefore it is expected to be more stable or it has a lower energy level than 2p orbital. So once we have the orbitals sp2 and 2p and the relative energy level, of course we can run through these options and we can decide which one will be the best answer. Now option A is definitely out because the orbitals will be 2s and sp3, which is definitely wrong. Then for B is also not true, 2S and sp3 hybridized orbital, it is also wrong. So the comparison should be between option C and D because option C will have sp2 hybridized orbital and 2p orbitals. Option D will have the same two types of orbitals. But of course the difference will be the relative energy level. So D is a much better answer because sp2 has a lower energy level and P has a higher energy level, which is consistent with what we've understand. SP2 is expected to be more stable. So in this case, D will be the answer. While C, the energy level, it is the other way around. We put this SP2 at a higher energy level, which is not true because it will suggest that it is less stable, which we know that it is not true. So the answer to this question in this case will be option D. Alright, so that was the discussion involving the state of hybridization of carbon in etene. Of course, this question requires us to be pretty familiar with the idea of hybridization. So if you're not so sure in terms of this concept, I have a video related to hybridization, which 
you might be interested to take a look. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.